Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Alan Weber from the mayor's office. Uh, beautiful day in Santa Fe, and a few very specific things to talk with you about. First, we always talk about uh, COVID-19, and now we really need to talk about COVID-19. I want to share some data, some headlines, and a chart. The data for Santa Fe County of new cases in just the last eight to 10 days, uh, 19 new cases, 41 new cases, 17, 18, 39, 28, 28, 11, and then yesterday, 33, and three more deaths from COVID-19. Uh, the chart for the whole state, if you uh, looked in the uh, New Mexican this morning, uh, we really have a graphic representation of exactly what has happened. We were doing very, very well and strong, keeping discipline, using masks and social distancing, and then we are spiking. And uh, we're so bad at the moment, uh, statewide, that the governor has said the virus is winning. The virus is winning. Uh, and there was another piece in the paper from uh, some of the governor's public health advisors saying that we may be suffering from COVID fatigue, but the virus does not get fatigued. I was on the phone yesterday with uh, the head of an organization that does um, a lot of data anal analysis, not just in New Mexico, but in Texas and around the country, uh, Dallas and El Paso are both seeing incredibly high levels of uh, spread of the COVID virus, and it's happening around the country. So we're, we were doing better than everybody. We are now uh, doing uh, not as well as we need to do. We really are called upon to focus on COVID-19. The governor put some new uh, restrictions in order uh, starting on Friday, and those are things that will, I think, just remind us that these are serious times, but there are the obvious things that we all know we need to do, and we need to do them. If we do them, we will be safer, we'll make it through it, we will be uh, able to uh, not only stay safe, but see economic uh, benefits as we're able to reward our shops and our stores for doing what the governor rec uh, recommended of getting uh, certified by the state of doing COVID safe practices. All those things depend upon us bending the curve back to where it needs to be. And we should recognize that it's tougher now. It's turning into cold weather. We're going to spend more time indoors. We're not going to be able to get out and hike as easily or with as much distance. So, I know we can do it. I know we've got the resources to do it. I know we've got the masks. We've got the hand sanitizer. We've got all of the materials we need. Now we simply have to pay attention as a community to stop the spread of COVID-19. If you're concerned about your own family and your own uh, community nearby, your neighborhood, download the Novid app, N-O-V-I-D. It is free and it is anonymous. No personal information gets shared. It simply provides you with an early warning system so you'll know as more and more of us download the Novit app where we are with exposure to the COVID virus. It's, a, it's like a weather forecasting app, but instead of showing what the weather is, it shows you how close you may be to someone uh, who may be positive COVID-19. So please, 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 Heed the governor's order. Do what we know is right. Wear your mask when you go out. Wash your hands before you go out. Wash your hands when you come home. Practice safe social distancing. I think the governor has said it all along. Uh, there's a very clear connection between the number of miles we travel and trips we make and the likelihood that someone will be exposed to COVID-19. So uh, as the weather gets cold uh, and it's harder to Practice social distancing when you go out. Limit your trips if you can. Uh, work with a neighbor to do grocery shopping as a shared activity. When you come back, wash up. Be safe. 
be safe. We, we know what we need to do. Let's just do it. It's smart. It's the right thing to do. It keeps all of us safe. Uh, the spread now that I'm hearing about is people 20 to 40 years old. So don't assume that young, strong, healthy people are automatically immune from this disease. It doesn't work that way. We're also facing uh, hospitals filling, and that makes it harder for our, for our frontline uh, workers, the people who are the heroes delivering everyday emergency health care as well as special COVID-related health care. We need to thank them, but we also need to keep their workload within the limits so they can get everybody healthy and safe. Uh, I want to talk about voting. Uh, it, it is amazing to see the turnout already in early voting in Santa Fe. It's, it is just a fantastic uh, demonstration of democracy at work. You can still do in person, same day, voter registration at the county clerk's office. The deadline is Saturday, October 31st. So if you're not registered, you're not out of luck. You can still get your vote and your voice heard in this election. If you want to vote early in person or turn in an absentee ballot that you filled out rather than mailing it, you can go to the Community Convention Center Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 uh, Monday through Friday, and Tuesday through Friday, noon to 8, and Saturday, 10 to 6. There are three locations open for in-person voting, the Christian Life Church on Seringo Road, County Fair Building uh, on Rodeo Road, and Southside Library on Jaguar Drive. I heard from uh, both of our District 3 council members yesterday that the lines at the uh, Southside Library were impressive and a great turnout as well as an orderly and efficient uh, movement so people's votes are counted and they can get their vote uh, into the democratic process. Please vote. Please tell your friends to vote. Please tell your family to vote. I'm not telling you who to vote for or who to vote against, but just every vote matters. This is not about partisan politics. This is about the health and the well-being of our, of our community, of our democracy, uh, and all of us depend on all of us getting out and participating. The aftermath of COVID. The aftermath of COVID is a number of things. We've got people who are hungry and need help. Saturday, October the 24th from 9 to 11 uh, at the Santa Fe Place Mall, there's a food distribution going on. Uh, if you need help, it's the right place to go. Santa, F Santa Fe Place Mall has been generous and thoughtful and community-minded in making that distribution site available. So Saturday, October the 24th from 9 to 11, there's a food distribution at the mall. If you don't need help, but you want to help somebody else, uh, that's a tremendous uh, way to help our community. Nobody should be hungry in Santa Fe. Nobody should be without food on the table. Uh, please make a contribution and uh, write a check or donate some money. Uh, act as a volunteer. Uh, do what you can. Uh, there are hungry people in Santa Fe. We want everyone to put food on their table for their family and themselves. Uh, it is another part of coming to terms with COVID-19. COVID-19 has also hit our small businesses and hurt our workers. There is uh, available now small business and nonprofit stabilization grants. Uh, the city and the county economic development teams are cooperating and collaborating in making these grants available and the window is open. Uh, if you want to find out what to do, you can go to uh, the City of Santa Fe website or the county. Uh, there is a special website for this particular uh, uh, grant program. Uh, it offers one-time grants of up to $15,000 for qualifying small business and non-profits. These are not loans. These are outright grants. Uh, and so please check it out. 
And if you're trying to make ends meet, you want to keep your doors open, you want to get paychecks to your employees, the small business and nonprofit stabilization grants are the way to do it. Another way to help is through our retail bingo program. Uh, this is an innovation that our tourism department, economic development department, our uh, city government teams are working to support small and medium-sized businesses in Santa Fe. There'll be a new November bingo card. There's some very simple ways to play and win prizes. Uh, you take your bingo card to a participating local business, and I'm told that we just had another 25 or 30 small local businesses step up and join this program. So we're probably in the neighborhood of 45 to 50 small and local mom and pop businesses that want to participate. You go and you get a stamp. You don't have to buy anything. It's great if you do buy something, but get your card stamped. Uh, go to an art supply shop. Get it stamped. Shop at a local bookstore. Get it stamped. Visit an art gallery. Visit the farmer's market. Get it stamped. Pick up uh, or, or do a dine-in at a coffee shop. Uh, buy, buy a takeout from a New Mexican cuisine restaurant. Get your card stamped. All of this is fun. It's meant to be a way to support local businesses and keep Santa Fe retail bingo going. So check it out. You can pick up a card. November cards are being printed right now. Uh, if you're a small business person, you want to participate, reach out to our tourism department. It's a great way to build community spirit, help the stores and shops stay open, help people get a paycheck, have some fun, uh, turn the fall and the winter into a little retail bingo game. Uh, help with paying utility bills. A lot of folks are stretched thin because of COVID-19. Thanks to PNM, there is a PNM COVID customer relief fund along with Help New Mexico are wrestling with their utility bills, cover most of your past due balance uh, if you've been affected in a very uh, tough way by COVID. Uh, PNMForwardTogether.com will get you the, the way to find out how you can get this help. Uh, there's also emergency rental and mortgage assistance program available. Uh, COVID is not just a disease. It also has a serious impact on our economy, on jobs, on small local businesses, people trying to earn a living. We know that uh, we need resiliency. So there is a small business resiliency virtual workshop coming up October the 27th. Uh, New Mexico True, uh, SBDC, uh, Law for Small Business, all collaborating you can help with your small business by checking it out uh, and registering for a small business workshop uh, resiliency program. Uh, you can find it. Uh, you can RSVP. Uh, well, we'll have a link at the city uh, website uh, so you can find it if you're interested. Uh, I'm looking at a piece of paper that got printed out, and it doesn't list the specific website, but says that you want to RSVP so you'll have a slot guaranteed. Uh, it's a way to keep your business up and running and be resilient during COVID-19. Uh, quickly back to voting before I talk about one other item, and that is um, mayors and cities around the country are participating in Vote Early Day. Uh, it's October the 24th. It's a national day uh, in cities across America, uh, and it is a way to memorialize and specifically dedicate one day so there's big and uh, successful turnout for early voting. October 24th is early uh, vote early day for the United States. U.S. Conference of Mayors is sponsoring it. Mayors across the country are participating as are more than 2,400 companies, nonprofits, uh, all designed to Take advantage of options for voting early. So early voting is happening in Santa Fe. Take advantage of it. If you want to participate in Vote Early Day, that's October the 24th, let's be a part of this national effort to get out the vote. Uh, the last thing I want to brief 
you on is progress towards setting up a committee to address um, culture, history, art, reconciliation, and truth. A uh, chart committee, a chart our way forward. Uh, this is the effort that I promised, and I'm working with the entire governing body, the city council, uh, as well as community groups across Santa Fe and northern New Mexico, so that we can have a constructive public discussion about our cultures, about our histories, art, statues, public monuments, uh, people's lives stories, uh, families' lives stories, tribal stories, uh, people who have lived here for 16 generations, people who have lived here for 35 generations, people who recently arrived and are in love with Santa Fe and want to talk about what this city and this community means to them. Uh, we, we want to have an open dialogue. We want to have people express their feelings, their views, tell us their family stories, tell us about their shared experiences across these artificial boundaries that we sometimes set up that keep people apart rather than bringing people together. Uh, I have a resolution as a draft that I'm giving the city council. It'll, it'll go through all three of our council committees. We have three standing committees. Uh, this will go through all three. Quality of life, public works and public utilities, our finance committee finally coming to the governing body for a vote as quickly and uh, in as expeditious a manner as we can do, recognizing that people want to be heard. Your voice matters. Your views matter. I've been getting some very constructive emails over the last few days about ways we can come together, about ways we can heal and respect each other. Uh, earlier this week on Monday morning, we had four faith leaders uh, on the plaza at 9 o'clock in a very small but profound faith circle praying for healing and for understanding and for peace in our community. I hope we can do that every Monday morning uh, with different faith leaders offering prayers for our community. We are the city of faith. We believe that faith matters. We want to practice that faith. We want to love our neighbor as ourselves. So this work is going forward. I think it is uh, very important. I think it is solemn work. It is earnest work. It is significant work. It is work of caring about and for each other. And it comes at a very important time. We should all acknowledge that these are very stressful days across America. We're going to run up to a national election uh, where strong feelings are held on all sides. Uh, we are dealing with COVID-19 and health threats and dangers. We're dealing with the aftermath of COVID-19, including economic and uh, other community impact. Our kids aren't going to school. Things don't quite feel as easy and as uh, convenient as they used to be. Uh, I think we all need to take a deep breath and look each other in the eye and show some profound respect and appreciation for how fortunate we are to live in Santa Fe. What a really beautiful, brilliant, lovely, strong, caring, compassionate community we have. This is the best place to live in the world. This is the most amazing place to live in the world. Our community is the most diverse. Our history is the most complicated, complex, and wonderful uh, in all of its dimensions. There is pain, but there is love that spreads across the pages of Santa Fe's history. And we should embrace all of it, acknowledge all of it, and then come together to work together for a better future, for a future of respect and a future of shared values. So uh, please work with this proposal. I think it comes from a good place. I think it has a way to take us forward as a community, to talk about culture and history, to talk about art and uh, monuments, to talk about personal experiences, to have everybody's voice heard in a meaningful, thoughtful, and respectful way. Thank you all for uh, being with me this morning. Uh, please stay safe. Uh, the numbers, uh, going back to COVID-19, the numbers, the graphs nationally are very disturbing. They're concerning. Uh, we have the ability 
to break the back of COVID-19, to bend the curve the way we did in the beginning of this public health emergency. We have the help of the governor. We have the support of elected officials here in the city of Santa Fe and in the county. We really need everyone to participate. So uh, please wear your face mask, use hand sanitizer, practice social distancing. These are the things we can all do. Uh, even when we're together as family, which is so much an important part of these days as we head toward the holidays, try to remind everyone in your family to stay safe and to look after each other. Till I see you next time at the end of the week, please take care of yourself, take care of your family, take care of this neighborhood and this city, this community. We are all in this together. We can make it if we all stick together, care for each other, look after each other. I will see you again soon. Stay healthy.